Oh, hey, hey, it is Trevor again from Plateau Astro, and today I'm going to give you a crash course, an intro into using the free astronomy app called Stellarium Mobile. Uh, I often get questions of people messaging me on Instagram saying, hey, what was that thing in the sky last night? Or is that red dot? Is that Mars? Or is that a star? So this video is to show you how to use this app and so you can try and figure out what is in the sky uh, by uh, yourself. So uh, a few things you're going to be able to find out what is in the sky yourself, how to go backwards and forwards in time to see what was in the sky or what is going to be in the sky, um, how to find certain things in the sky that you know are up there, like a planet or the moon or whatever, um, how to see all the constellations in the sky, and also how to see different sky cultures. That one's really kind of cool, and I might have a short manifesto about constellations and astrology uh, at the end. So here it is. Uh, here is the app uh, Stellarium. So I'm going to open this up. And this is free. There is a premium version that you can buy. But what I'll show is is just the free stuff. But uh, uh, here we go. So the first time you open it, it'll probably ask for your location so it knows where you are on Earth. And then usually the first time people open it, it'll show the sky at, at nighttime. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show is, is this is the sky later tonight. I'm recording this in the afternoon, but it's showing the, the, the nighttime. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it straight up like that, and it enables compass mode. And so now, wherever I point it, it is going to show me what you're looking at in the sky. You can see different constellations uh, come into view. You can see the, the, the compass marks there, so north and west and east over here. So that's what this app does. You point it where you're looking and it'll show you what is in the sky. Um, this isn't the time right now, <laughs> okay? Um, so in the bottom right, you can see the time right there. So this is 2059, almost 9 p.m. Uh, I'm gonna tap on that. Okay, so I'm gonna tap on the time right there and you can change the time. So if you saw something last night and you want to go back in time, you can do that here. So in the bottom, you see it has a little scrubber thing. You can move that back and forth like that. So you can change the time to be the morning or the nighttime, whatever you want. That's a little bit imprecise. So instead, you can tap on the time right there. We see the, the seconds ticking up and tap on that. And it gives you precise controls over the exact time. So if it was last night and it was, say, 9.30 p.m. and you saw something in the sky, you can change the time there and you can point to where you were looking in the sky and figure out what it was. The other thing you can do is you can turn off the compass mode here. <laughs> so you don't have to constantly be going, going like that. All you gotta do is just tap anywhere on the screen like that and you can drag your finger around, and then you don't have to have it pointed where you are, okay? You can also zoom out by pinching outwards like that, like that, okay? And then you can sort of move where you want uh, with, your, with your fingers uh, like that. Um, so we can go back in time, we can go forwards in time, you can even move this, this date to, say, the day you were born. So I was born in 1988, so I'll go back in time, 1988, on July 15th, and I can take a look at what the sky looked like on the day I was born. What did the moon look like? What planets were, were, were in the sky? Uh, where were the constellations in the sky during that day? That's really cool, and people find that kind of, uh, kind of interesting. All right, next thing is if you heard on the news, maybe a certain planet was going to be visible in the sky, but you don't know where to, 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 to find it. I'm going to show you how to do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the time it is right now. So you see this little like time machine looking icon in the middle there? Set time to now. It'll take you to the moment that it is right now. And I am going to move the time so it's like 10 p.m. tonight. And again, you've already done this, so I just move the hours forward like this, okay, and I can pause time if I like, and I'll tap anywhere so I just have a clear view of the sky here. In the top right, you're going to see a little magnifying uh, search icon there, so I'll tap there, 
And I know that Saturn is up in the sky, but if I know that, but I don't know where it is in the sky, this will help you. So I'm going to type Saturn, and you can tap on, on what you, what you want to see, Saturn, okay? And it moves it to the center of the, the, the screen, to where it is. This is where you can use the compass mode, so just hold it straight up, like that, and it gives you a little uh, uh, positioning arrow where you should move the phone. So I gotta move to the right, to the right, to the right, like this, and there is Saturn uh, over there, or that's where it will be uh, uh, tonight uh, in the future. So if you're looking for certain things, this is really useful. I'll do another one quickly. Where is the moon right? Uh, where will the moon be tonight? Okay, at you know 10 p.m. tonight, the moon will still be below the horizon, but then I can move time forwards, and I can find out what time the moon will be visible uh, in the sky, like that. So that's combining a few few different things: search and and time difference. All right, I'm gonna tap away like this. The other cool thing you can do with this is. Uh, see the constellations. Now, as I, as I move around here, you've seen some of the constellations come into view with some of the artwork and stuff like that. Right now, it's only showing sort of one at a time. But in the bottom left there, you can see there's some, like, two little boxes on top of each other. So I'm going to tap that, and you see a few different things. Grids and lines, constellations, landscape, atmosphere. So, what I'm going to do, I am going to tap on constellations just once, just tap on it, and you'll see that the constellations they disappear. So the setting is off, they disappear. I'll turn it back on again, and what's happening now is I'm going to tap and I'm going to hold. Tap and hold, I'm going to have more options. So tap, hold, and now I have a bunch of more options for this. And the setting that I'm going to turn off is called centered only. And this is on by default, and this is only going to show me one constellation that is like in the center of my screen. If I turn this off, it's going to show me all of the constellations uh, that are uh, above my head. So Cepheus, Cygnus, Pegasus, Draco, Hercules, I can spin around in my chair here, Aquarius, Pegasus, uh, Aries, Aruga, Lynx, okay? I can see all of these different constellations. The other thing I can do is I can look below and I'm basically looking through the Earth and I'm seeing what constellations are below me. And we can't see these here in the, the Northern Hemisphere, but if you were down in, say, Australia or somewhere else in the Southern Hemisphere, you'd be able to see these by looking straight up. That's really cool. You can like, look through the Earth and see what stars and constellations are, are below you. Um, I'll go back to the, uh, the, where the, uh, uh, the options are here. I'll tap and hold again on, on constellations. And there's a bunch of other things here I can show or turn off lines or drawings or labels. However you want to look at these, you have those, those options, options there. All right. The last thing I'm going to show here is uh, different sky cultures. So what we're seeing here right now are constellations for what we call the Western Sky Map. And this origin, originated sort of like in, 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 in Europe, in, in, in Greece, <laughs> around there by a guy named Ptolemy, okay? And we use these uh, in professional astronomy to sort of tell us where to look for things in the sky. There's a bunch of different ways we can do that, but this is sort of one way. And this is a very prevalent constellation map, okay? So we see it often with astrology, <laughs> Western astrology, okay? When people think of astrology, think of like Gemini, Cancer, Taurus, uh, Aries, all of those. Those are just constellations in one constellation map. One constellation map. But there's dozens, perhaps hundreds of different constellation maps out there. And to me, I think it's really powerful to teach people about these, these, different, these different ones. Even if it's just to try to debunk some, some astrology, astrology stuff. So how do you turn this on? Okay. In the top left, you're going to see this little hamburger icon. And there's a bunch more settings here. Some of these are only available in the premium paid version of this, uh, but uh, uh, I think this should be available in, in the free version too. So you see sky, sky cultures there. Sky cultures. So we are in the western sky map right now, but you can scroll through and there's a bunch of different different ones here. They're separated by different regions. So there's the America ones there. So uh, Blackfoot, Inuit, Navajo, okay. Asia, okay. So uh, Chinese, Chinese contemporary. I'm going to switch 
constellation maps here, sky cultures. So I'm gonna tap on Chinese, and we get a description of, of what all this is, the history of it and, and everything, all right? But if I tap on use, that's gonna turn on and, and change the sky map here. So use, and now we can see the constellations, and they're totally different from the Western, the Western sky map here. So constellations like rooftop, emptiness, temple, line of ramparts. I don't know what, I don't know the stories of these. Uh, I'm not even sure if the translation is, is perfect for these, so just asterisk there. Uh, but I think this is really cool to show people the different types of sky cultures that are out there. Uh, we can go and, and try a few more here. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Norse, okay? And um, you can see, again, different different sky cultures here, okay? Some of these you might recognize, okay? Sort of the Big Dipper and a Little Dipper there. Apparently the Big Dipper is called Man's Cart and the Little Dipper is called Woman's Cart. I didn't prep this, but I guess, you know, that's how they've interpreted it, okay? I'll do one more just because we are here in Canada, sky cultures. I'm gonna go to the Inuit one up at the top here, all right? And you can see that those same stars, which we consider either Ursa Major, Big Bear, or uh, uh, the Big Dipper, they call it caribou. And obviously that makes sense for, for their culture. Um, and a few other ones there. Uh, we have blubber container, collarbones. Um, yeah, uh, those are some of the constellations in the Inuit sky culture. So. Uh, it's really cool just like to let people explore these. Uh, kids seem to really enjoy finding out the different names and the different interpretations of the, 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 the constellations here. All the same stars, all the same sky, just different interpretations based on that culture. So hopefully that is a, uh, a good crash course into Stellarium Mobile. There's a bunch of other free ones out there. I've sort of found over the years that this kind of the, the, the best, it's the one I use for, for workshops. And I say that just because it's good for its freedom, uh, its free price, and uh, uh, its feature set isn't too, too much, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna overload some people. It's kind of just in this really great, great, great sweet spot. So hopefully that was a good explainer, a good crash course into using Solaria Mobile. Um, thanks for watching.